After almost three decades of stagnation there is finally a significant forward movement in the artillery modernization and transformational plans. The success of the indigenously developed 155mm 45 caliber Danush gun, the induction of the first two 155mm 39 caliber M777 ultralight howitzers out of the 145 contracted for and the signing of the contract for 100 self-propelled tracked 155mm 52 caliber howitzers are positive developments in Indian artillery's overall transformation plan. DRDO also got the Defense Ministry to agree to strike down the licensed production of 1,100 imported 155mm, 52 caliber artillery guns. The Indian Army's Field Artillery Rationalization Program, approved in 1999, aims to equip its 169 artillery regiments. One regiment has 18 guns, with over 3,155mm howitzers towed, tracked self-propelled, wheeled and ultralight by 2027. Unfortunately the state of Indian artillery has only deteriorated over the years due to New Delhi's inability to acquire even a single artillery gun since the Bofors scam broke in the late 1980s. Due to these scams Bofors, Deenil and Saltam were blacklisted. This clearly points at how Niragandhi corruption damaged India's defense preparedness. This incompetency by the government has slowly led to Pakistan closing the gap between India and Pakistan as far as artillery is concerned. India's total towed strength on paper stands at 4,150 compared to Pakistan's 3,278 though that's not the reality. India posses a total of 380 155mm guns compared to 394 155mm guns of Pakistan. These are primary howitzers for Indian Army. Pakistan also fields a few dozen of 203mm gun with BOF manufactures the required ammunition that are used in these guns. Pakistan Panther 155 deal is not verified, which it may bought in very limited quantities. However, it did not issue follow-up orders. Currently, the M198 is Pakistan's primary 155mm towed howitzer. India plans to decommission its medium artillery whereas Pakistan's 130mm M46 clones and 122mm variants stand at a staggering 1,243 guns. OFB participated in AHQ RFP competing with two other private manufacturers, who fielded equipment in association with foreign OEMs. After extensive fit, OFB's gun had emerged as the only gun system meeting all quality requirements. 130 artillery guns which is now in the range of 25 km we will get 130 mm guns which will take to the range of 35 to 40 km. The cost of a new 155 mm artillery gun comes to around Rs 15 crore, while the upgradation has been done for just Rs 1 crore for each thus saving the exchequer a lot of money. India may possess over 1,700 light guns as compared to Pakistan's 1,643 guns. OFB has stopped producing 105mm Indian field gun and for light field gun army projected annual requirement of 30 LFGs from 2013-14 onwards but intent of only 8 guns was received in 2013-14. Premature expiry of 669 guns 105mm LFG without completing prescribed 4,500 rounds of firing also noted. The Army is looking for replacement of its old 105mm light field guns with a mix of towed, mounted and wheeled artillery. Bharat Forge's conventional recoil ULH is a 155mm-39 calories long-range field artillery weapon system weighing less than 4.8 tons. Advanced Hybrid Recoil ULH is a message variant of conventional ULH which incorporates the state-of-the-art advanced recoil system soft recoil technology, which further brings down the weight of the gun to less than 4.5 tons. The mounted gun system provides a high level of autonomy and shoot and scoot capability and has a distinct advantage in the mountains due to its shorter turning radius compared to the towed gun. 
The wheeled self-propelled gun is ideally suited for the plains and the semi-desert terrain vis-a-vis -vis the tracked version providing better speed and mobility at lesser costs, however this project has now been shelved and is not expected to be revived in the future. Self-propelled artillery platform comes with its own propulsion system. They were equipped with guns of usually higher caliber than tanks, most have 155 mm, but are positioned on a higher angle for bombardment of long-range targets. Unlike tanks, the armor of an SPA is effective only against small arms fire and shrapnel since they are not designed for frontal engagements like tanks. SPA is most useful in mobile conflicts where its shoot and scoot ability is a major advantage over tone artillery. The Pakistani army as of Jan 2017 has a grand total of 325 self-propelled guns while India going to receive its first batch of K-9 Vajra in coming weeks. Pakistan could spend $844 million more by 2024 on SPH. Overall the state of Indian artillery is not so good, due to decades of policy paralysis, inaction and mismanagement by the government and the army, India has fallen behind Pakistan but situation is expected to change in future with Indian industries coming up with various indigenous solutions.